Talk Show. It's a Daily Talk Show, episode 458. From our makeshift studio, the Overlow Hotel, Woolloomooloo. Uh, yesterday, uh, TV royalty, today, mm-hmm. internet royalty. Uh, <laughs> Tanya Hennessy? I hate being called that. Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, no, she, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. What is it that you don't like crowns? You don't like being no, no, royal? No, no, I don't like, no. I don't, don't like power. Internet, or the no, it's the bit. internet, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I almost no, had yeah. like a fight with Joe Hildebrand. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a fight with Joe Hildebrand the other day because he finished Studio 10. I just happened to be in the makeup room and mm-hmm. he was like, I said, oh, you finished. It was 12 o'clock. And he goes, yeah, I just go home and do nothing now. Like, And I was like, I'm so used to hearing that from doing breakfast radio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he goes, can't all be internet celebrities? And I was like, I have two acres. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, he was like, fair, whoa. Uh, I mean, the funny thing is, it's a fair point, but for us, we see internet as not only the aspirational thing, but there's mm-hmm. nothing low status or mm. negative about what do you think uh, kids thinking years ago 30 years ago i want to be a rock star mm. right. now it's i want to be an a internet YouTuber. superstar youtuber yeah exactly that's what they say mm-hmm. i remember um living in bondi and we had a, a phone chat and you had just oh you hadn't even released a video yet mm. do you remember us chatting about this yeah. and it was amazing because you were talking about oh i've got this first uh, I've got this video on a release but I want to make one before it and we just had this great discussion about releasing a video or putting something out into the world essentially is what we were talking about yeah and you did it and it fucking worked and I remember you feeling not so great about it working at that point I still feel weird about it well it worked I don't know (laughs) because it feels like I'm fraudulent or if, you know what I mean because I've worked so hard on my radio career like I used to get in it like before you know like 3 30 mm-hmm. like when I first started then obviously you know, <laughs> rolled in five minutes before I was supposed to be on yeah, air yeah. um and then you know I'd, I'd finish at like two o'clock in the afternoon and then I would come back at five and I just worked so hard on my craft of radio I'd edit everything myself I would do all the podcasting and then I did this video that I didn't even edit and it, it I don't know, like, mm. it kind of happened very naturally, the digital stuff, whereas I've really tried to work on my radio career, mm. but I've always got way more uh, success in, even though I do have good radio success. I don't know, it just feels a bit bizarre to me. I still am coming, I actually still, like, I'm in therapy because, <laughs> like, I can't understand or how to deal with what's going on because I was just, like, a normal person and now mm. people, like, scream at mm. me in the street. <laughs> <But is> it- <laughs> and I'm still a normal person. I'm like, ah, oh, what do you want? But is, it, is there some power in knowing that you can't control this shit and that some things will work, some things yes. won't work, so you just do the things you want to do and then mm. you'll be good? Yeah. I just like being myself professionally <laughs> and from an inter- and so is there is there an issue that you feel like with the internet thing you weren't doing that no it just felt like i don't know i felt too old to be on the platform i still feel a bit old to be on the platform but it's not really relevant mm. anymore it just it's such a juggernaut like it just mm. became this thing mm. and i guess it's weird because i just don't watch my videos back i feel a disconnect from it and but so is it the the difference between video and audio then? Yeah. Just my audio is such a, I feel like it's a craft, but my digital is like, whoops. Mm. Well, I think <laughs> like, it, it feels could, accidental. But yeah. then you could also say it's an accumulation of your Absolutely. musical theatre background, mm. your radio chops, and then into this. And so it's like a, a combination of all of the skills you've been building throughout your life that is now where it's landed at. Yeah, like literally everything has led up to where I am now. I'm like happy. I don't mean to sound like I'm like nihilistic about no, it. Yeah. I'm stoked. I'm living my best life. I'm yeah. in active wear at 9 a.m. in a very nice hotel with two men. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Talking pre show about it. eating yeah. cheese. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Josh talking I like about that. that. That's relatable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is, is it the, I guess, radio, there's um, a focus. So it's like, okay, whatever I say well, you through know the mic. the discipline, whereas yeah. there's no discipline for the internet. It's like, do whatever you want. Have you seen that guy who just like dances and talks at the same time? He's like, what are you doing? What do you want? It's super weird. Like <laughs> yeah. my brother's really into it. And there's so many niches on the internet. Like there's no right or wrong. Not that there's right or wrong in radio either, but it's more of a discipline than, mm. than social because we're still figuring out what that is. So is that an identity issue then? Is that saying, okay, with when you're on the internet, the internet can be, cat videos or it could be people doing ASMR or yeah, whatever like it is. <laughs> and so where it's like radio, 
it's not like radio is not really a freak show, whereas the internet has everything. Yeah, mm. and I am a freak show yeah. on the internet, and I, I don't mind being that as long as I get paid. And so, <laughs> I mean, I'm not some money chaser, by the way. <laughs> I got like, because uh, you know how you get paid on on Facebook now, like you get monetization. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's like, oh, you must make heaps of money now it's monetized. I made like $14 last week. Oh, what'd you do with the 14 bucks? I've still not come through. Like, yeah. I'm just waiting for the money to come through. Like, it's so shit. But I'll tell you where there is money, YouTube. YouTube. Like, pre-roll? Pre-roll, mid-roll, end-roll, whatever roll. All the rolls. Just all the rolls. All the rolls. I've met these, like, teenagers who are, like, multi-millionaires mm. at VidCon and stuff. Like, it's Unbelievable how much money. I'm talking like 40, 50 grand a month. But is that narrative... Yeah, wow. That's um, just that's just monetization. That's not sponsorship. But is that uh, narrative destructive to the industry? I guess because you hear these stories of the people who are doing it. But it only comes... Success only comes to those who are creating it for the right reasons, uh, making original mm. content who mm -hmm. are passionate about it because you're not going to make consistent content for years before you actually break through unless you're passionate about it. So mm. what were your reasons if the result... Didn't Is matter. It, yeah. It, well, there was no result. Like, I didn't expect a result. Okay. I just wanted to... Well, I messaged uh, Jules Lund uh, when I was in Toowoomba doing radio and I sent him my presenting show reel and I was like, hey, what do you think of my presenting show reel? And he was like, can I call you? And I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> hated it. <laughs> uh, and then he, he called me in Toowoomba and I still remember the street I was on because I... I watched Getaway all the time. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, my God. And he talked to me and he was like, don't make presenting videos like you're not the best presenter i think you're really good at being yourself so just do two three minute videos of you just being yourself and put it on facebook see how it goes and i was like okay and then the best bit of advice he gave me was and keep going and i was like okay mm -hmm. first video i put up 1.3 million views in 24 hours or less than what was the video it was called the difference between 18 and 30 i was 29 just about to turn 30 and i screenshot it and sent it to jules and he was like like i don't think he ever expected it to go like that mental mm. and he was like keep going keep going what do you got next what do you got next and I was mm. like oh shit shit so I just I kept uh going and I've continued to keep going and I guess it was I just wanted to be myself and be funny and I love radio but you work in a team and yes I actually really like working in a team mm. but it means that your vision sometimes is uh amalgamated with somebody else's and it's mm. constantly a compromise mm. which is fine but on digital you are the director, you're the editor, you're the CEO. Mm. And I kind of liked that. And yeah, like, I don't know. I still find it weird that people even watch my videos and turn up to my shows. I'm like, why? But cool. <laughs> like, I do have massive <laughs> imposter syndrome because when you create on the, the internet, people aren't applauding and people aren't, you know, like, mm. and also don't read a lot of the comments because I've had a lot of negative comments. So I sort of try and help mm. myself psychologically with that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's the weirdest thing. But because you have no boss, there's no one there going, great, try this. Mm -hmm. And I don't read my analytics because I don't give a shit. I make stuff how I want to and how I feel as opposed to an analytical researcher who goes, oh, they like this type of video, make more mm -hmm. of those. It's definitely a more intense landscape than something like radio in terms of the feedback you get, the mm -hmm. visual seeing your statistics skyrocket and not. Yep. And so then you can ride that wave. What from radio... Did, can you actually translate to the video stuff or, oh, or to, the, to the solo business or solo operator style? It, like video, uh, sorry, radio is short form. So it's like, you know, two and a half, three minutes. It's really catchy. It's punchy, punchy. It's engaging. And in radio, you know, when people come back for an ad break or a song, especially if you're in a competitive market, they've got a choice. So you've got to get them in that first 15 seconds. So I always put the most interesting part of my video, hopefully, uh, the first five seconds, mm. then put the headline and go into it and make the cuts really hard and fast. And when you're editing audio for a package, that's generally what you do as well. Mm. But yeah, it's short form content, which is why I really struggle because I'm trying to write long form at the moment. It's so difficult for me because radio and digital mm. and the writing that I do is all short form, but to try and elongate is very difficult because I just have no training in it. Mm. But that doesn't mean I won't do it. I love a challenge. Because you just build a muscle <laughs> in a specific area. Yeah. And so now it's just trying to work out yeah. a, a, new, a new approach. And also radio is real relatable. Like I, I've always found that the most engaging content that I've done has been relatable on the air. So I'm like, mm. okay, how can I put that on digital? But also a lot of it, it sounds like I'm way more strategic than I am. I literally just turn the camera on and just try and... I if, think there's if a... If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I don't care. There's intuitive strategic, <laughs> which yeah, is, I intuitive. think, what you've Intuition. done. The hard thing about uh, radio shows and new ones, I mean, how, you've had a bunch where you go into a small town and it's obviously an audience already there of 
just the locals and then you have to work out what to cater to that audience the unique thing is you've built an audience where you know how to cater to them because you've been there throughout the growth period. But at the start, those conversations we have early on, the conversations I've had with myself are, who the fuck is this for? Mm. Who am I making this for? You, you, oh, maybe I could make it for these kinds of people. But that doesn't exist yet. The weird thing is, and I don't know if you've come to this point, Tommy, is like, I just go, I make it, I make it, full stop. And then hopefully it finds an audience. And I think that's like a good message for anyone who mm. wants to work in social. Make it. Make content you like, make content you consume. Like I don't, like oh, in saying that I love a lot of true crime and I don't make a lot of true crime. I like a lot of stories about murder and I don't make a lot of stories about murder. Or you don't make murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, oh my God, oh my God. Um, but like I love short form. That's how mm. I like to consume content. So I write short form. My book was a sh- basically short form uh, video and audio. In, in a book form because I, I know people have low attention spans. But yeah, like you just make it for you. It sounds narcissistic and it'll find an audience. I, I think if you go the other way around, you're constantly searching for what other people want. Whereas if you just do you, you'll find an audience. Mm-hmm. I really think that. I find the therapy stuff interesting because it's something that I've always grappled with. I feel like I should go see a psychologist. Oh, definitely you should. Um, no, I'm <laughs> no, but I think it's a good thing to. I think it's a good like it's a good thing to do, right? Like to be able, like, can you share what going into a therapist for the first time? I feel like my instinct is to like say, okay, this is what I want to talk about. I'm worried that okay, I've only got an hour. Yeah. How do how do you manage what you're going to talk about? Uh, with someone well I've been seeing a psychologist since I was 19 so like I don't two know. years mm-hmm. <laughs> two years thank you so much Tommy <laughs> we're, we're all we're all only tw- 21 <laughs> in here so young <laughs> wait how old are you he's, no he's legitimately 19 yeah, he's not. <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah. Are you really? Yeah. 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 How annoying is I he? I never know how to talk to teenagers. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, you, you're like oh, TikTok. Can, like, can, can, can you have a conversation yeah. with a 19-year-old? Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Ask him anything. Um, he'll, he'll answer. Do anything. you like YouTube? That's generally my go-to. <laughs> Uh, okay. Nah. <laughs> He's a bit old I, soul. Yeah, I actually don't watch that much YouTube. Yeah. What do you watch? Um, Netflix. What do you watch on Netflix? Um, documentaries. Yes. Oh, he's a cool 19-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Old soul. Do you drink a lot? No, no, don't drink at all. Whoa, he's a freak. Yeah. <laughs> when I was 19, I was never sober. <laughs> Keep going. Never this is great. sober. What else do you want to ask, Mr. 97? You were born in 97. No, so he's born in 99, but he got an enter score of 97, an ATAR of 97. Oh, you're like a genius boy. So he's, he's smarter <laughs> than us, yeah. What do you want to do when you grow up? Grow, uh, working with Tommy and Josh is pretty good. Come on, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually would. I actually, you I would, want to be I would, on camera? I, um, uh, not at the moment. Not. At, I'm happy. I'm happy being behind the scenes at the moment. Do you want to work on TV? Uh, nah. I like the. I like the new wow. new sort of form. Cool stuff. Yeah. You like the internet. Yeah. This All is of a ha- sudden, I'm is- validated. I'm on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you forget what I said at the yeah. beginning. I'm internet royalty. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually how a 19-year-old date goes these yeah, days. This is, right. <laughs> this is good. Well, why don't you ask your Spotify question? Oh, uh, what's What's your latest? What's your latest song on Spotify that you play? Juice, <laughs> Lizzo. Why? This is what he asks on dates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nice. A bit modern. Like it sounds a bit like. Oh, I've definitely got apps on my phone. <laughs> Lizzo's great though, isn't she? I love wow. Lizzo. But do you actually need the date to get out their phone to check? Because it's a very specific. You said. What was the last? I mean, I've never actually done that on a date. Okay, so you were just oh, only had, he's only had a couple dates. So. Yeah, yeah, but you should just go be free, go be you. You don't don't date, just go pash people places. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> you're the worst parent, by the way. <laughs> go take drugs and play on the road. You know. <laughs> Good advice. No, from but internet like, when you, when is there, <laughs> you know, I'm all of a sudden like, yeah, yeah. this is me. Validated. That's how I identify. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Richard Wilkins wouldn't give that advice. But <laughs> <laughs> I like Richard Wilkins. I'm so awkward. I, every time I see him on a red carpet, I always want to be like, hi, but I can't. Well, he's the voice we all grew up with. Mm. He's like dad. Like, he's yeah. got such a dad vibe. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah he's, <laughs> he's very, he's super warm and like so yeah, loving to his kids. Yeah. The therapy thing. Just, so you, Sorry. No, no, that's right. I will deflect. No, well, I'm just, <laughs> no, I'm super interested in it. So you started uh, going to seeing a psychologist when you were 19. Yes. Did you ha- and in every city I've moved to, like I've lived in Bathurst, Melbourne, Sydney, Newcastle, Griffith, Toowoomba, Canberra, back to Sydney, 
I've seen a psychologist in all those places. I will, like, the first thing I'll do is move to a town, then find a psych. <laughs> what's, the, what's the quality of a, a psychologist that you look for? Oh, you just got to collect, like, click with them. Because mm-hmm. and I've, I've left plenty of them being like, you don't get it. Yeah. Do they need to be a fan of you? Like, do you no! Like, but, like, do you want them to... So be tough on you. Like, do you find that you connect with people when they say, Tanya, you need to, you know, you need to stop worrying about this or is it more oh, like... Oh, you need to go to therapy. They don't talk like that. Oh, uh, yeah. How does, <laughs> how does it work? Yeah, how does well, it work? I reckon work? you probably need to go to one and then yeah. you'll figure it out because if yeah. your curiosity is leading you d- uh-huh. down there... And also it sounds like you maybe suffer from anxiety uh-huh. just from like identifying it in myself yeah, the whole cheese board was that no it? just like <laughs> i think your mind runs and mm. you leave a lot in your head and that's yeah. it's a good thing but it's also like a hard thing and i identify that in myself and mm-hmm. yeah like i can i can hear you mm. on a soul level <laughs> <laughs> so then what's the catalyst at 19 to make the decision because if john i'm waiting you, to I'm, right how I'm, I'm a 20 uh, how old am i 29 20. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's and so the thing is, like growing 20. up, growing up, it was one of those things. Like I think there was a slight stigma, not to going to a psychologist or whatever. But I remember growing up, and my mum said, "If you don't behave, we're going to the doctor and uh, about your ADD." I was never diagnosed with ADD, uh. but it was that whole thing of like in the back of my mind, I was like, "I think I'm an ADD kid." Mm. But if I like sort of just do it at home, I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> all right. under the radar. Yeah, yeah, which is I I think it's sort of a toxic way of, of looking at it it is but um, it's also like what people had and what people knew at the time mm. Mm. is it but is that thinking the result of the stigma that we grew up with around mental health well i think part of it is i fucking hate admin i can't like do anything with <laughs> oh. admin let alone like so part of it is it's like the going and finding a psychologist multiple times like mm. you have like that's a huge amount of no admin. you just go to a doctor and yeah. you say hey like i'm sad or say mm-hmm. whatever your symptoms are yeah. and they say hey like maybe you should see a psychiatrist or a psychologist uh, a psychiatrist will give you drugs mm-hmm. and a psychologist and and it's a bit more in depth so they can diagnose like schizophrenia or mm-hmm. bipolar or whatever um i've had a lot of mental health in my life not not myself but a lot mm-hmm. of my family mm-hmm. good friends um very very intense psychological issues mental health issues and then you know you say and then they give you the gp will refer you to a psychologist Mm -hmm. and you get on a mental health plan and you get 10 sessions for like half the price Mm -hmm. it's so good and then if you don't like the person Mm -hmm. you go back to your doctor and say can i see someone else yeah sure like it's actually easy is there mechanisms Mm. though you're making it hard in your head what i'm saying is the catalyst what is what when do you go Fuck! It's the last resort, mm. and how do you not, it's not wait the till last then? Resort. No, but, but I mean, mean if it's like from an ad, yeah, and that's the thing, right? It's like uh, preventative asthma thing. I never use that purple fucking puffer as a because you had to brush your teeth after. Yeah, using yeah. It. Do you remember, did oh, you, you ever have an asthma? Person. asthma. <laughs> well, no, asthma hey, yeah, I've got like a MyGov message at the moment, and my theory is if I don't open it, there, it's like an unread uh, Instagram. They'll be like, "Oh, Josh hasn't opened it. Yet. <laughs> I, should, I should open it." But I mean, how are you with admin? terrible that's why i have a manager yeah please do everything and i'll just turn up that's so what's so what terrible getting here today <laughs> and so what's the i mean that's but that's why i think it's so interesting that uh, someone who doesn't uh, necessarily think they're good at admin you've you've been able to get over that hurdle for calling up and booking in appointments well because you just have to mm. i know the alternative yeah and then what so did you ever push back on it or no you just, no, you, because it's been too successful for me to push back on. Yeah. And also, like, you work in the public eye and people mm-hmm. comment on you and people will hate you and people, you know, and it's too much to put onto your friends and, and family. Like, you've, I felt like I had to take responsibility for my feelings and then do something proactively about it so mm-hmm. I could live a better life instead of being inside my own head or yeah. being sad all the time. And I can't make my best content and I can't be my best mm-hmm. self if I'm sad. And mm-hmm. that's it. And so I, I, it's like this... You either go down the rabbit hole, and I know how that feels, or you try and lift yourself back up. Mm. So I try and lift myself back up because <laughs> like, mm. I can't create there, and I love to create. My mm. meaning and calling is to create. I watch a lot of Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I met this person the other day and didn't say, like, how are you? I said, what's your calling? And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Put down the Oprah podcast, Tanya. <laughs> Does Oprah have her own channel now? Is it O channel? Because yeah, remember O? Oh, Hasbro. Yeah, what's what's the? She has her own channel in own the states. Network? Okay, yeah, the O Network. I the guess. O Network. Did they bring own. that to like Foxtel or anything? Yeah, yeah. Own o- Oprah Winfrey Network. Own. But I don't know. No, but I don't know if it came from Australia. Yeah, yeah. Um, when do you create your best work? 
when I'm feeling it, not when I'm meant to do it or supposed to do it. Like if I'm sitting at home and go, oh, I'm going to do that video. Oh, I'm going to write that thing. Like this mm. morning, maybe I was late because I was writing. <laughs> That's okay. You're in your, in your place. <laughs> and also I got stuck in traffic. Uh, I probably should have <laughs> given a bit more time. But yeah, I was writing and I was like, I'm writing the introduction to my book uh, for this second book. And I was like, I'm just on this. And I woke up needing to. And that's mm. when I need to instead of have to is when I write or create my best. Or if I'm at home going, oh, that's a good idea, then I'll yeah. just film it. And that always goes mm. the best. What's the feeling? You wake up. How do you know that you need to write? I don't know. I just... The, the hand goes out for the laptop or uh-huh. phone phone I write a lot on my phone and I write a lot in the toilet <laughs> yeah then <laughs> makes sense so that approach I think trust is trust the process it's, but it's like an, uh, you could see it as an old creatives process you oh, know man, I'm like the old creative like I'm yeah. that like weird poet sort of vibe but then radio the one thing I didn't like about it is that do you I'm, miss it no, nah, because I've got this. We've basically this built is, our we've own. We've done a radio show, but just with like a little less structure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, it just costs out. us more money. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> but Do you ever wish you had have called this the fortnightly talk show? Uh, <laughs> no, well, I mean, that's, that's interesting. I think the one of the things, the on, one of the only points of difference that we have is that we're daily. Mm. Yeah, which is which is similar to radio, really, isn't it? Mm. But then, so the this method, which is show up daily, which I find cathartic in in some respects like i feel like i get it off my head Mm -hmm. i get uh, thoughts out of my brain you know sometimes they're good sometimes they're bad but that works for me the radio approach for someone like you that you know you want to feel good and then you will do your best work but then you got to show up did you battle with that when you were actually full-time in you know, no, because I always found it like work and it was different and the muscles there, you know, when you're like in show mode yeah, and yeah. you're like, mm, 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 like punching it out, creating it, you sort of go into a different zone, especially when you're collaborating. So I don't know, I found radio more mu- like, because you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Digital, you don't have to do. Mm. Like that's my free time. Like some people go to the gym and I just created content. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like. I didn't have to do it, but with radio, I had to show up. I had to create. I had to be creative, and I get mad at myself if I didn't do a different angle that day, or mm-hmm. I didn't do something challenging, or I didn't like surprise the audience. Or mm. so I had a bunch of like personal KPIs in radio. But so do you, do I still you, do. Do you think the best came out in you in that scenario? Yeah, because um, not the. I mean, obviously, it's like you know, but but you you're in a controlled environment, and I don't know. The best part about radio is that you can fi- you you can be very present because. When you're working with a really good team, everything goes like, and you would love this, like your mm. your mind goes and you're just present. And that's what I like about mm. any sort of live medium because I'm an anxious person, but when you're on, the camera's on, the mics are on, it's live and you're there and it's real and it's present and it's exciting. And I forget about every issue that I've ever had and yeah. I just get to live in the moment. And that, that flow state is what I chase and that's my like, Mm. But yeah, no, I, I think that I did create some of my best stuff because I had to. And that's also an interesting mm. theory. Could you take some of those structures and apply it to exactly what you're doing now? Yes, but I don't get paid consistently on mm. social. I don't get like... So it's maybe a few, you're early to the to the party, but surely we're going to get to a point where it's like... Uh, this thing's big enough where it's like you can have your team of five people and you build your studio that's the equivalent of what a radio like you create radio on your terms Mm. like surely that's where it will eventually go don't you think I don't know like Lily Singh you know the YouTuber Lily Singh she's huge she's got like a full team she has like multiple channels 20 million subs like she's multi multi millionaire she's living her best life Mm. but also her content's really really good and she's really funny and she's really authentic I really like her I think she might be the best YouTuber on the platform Um, I've never seen her content what what is US US yeah she's really like eh, it's quite similar to mine actually Mm. but I actually found out about her after creating my own content. I was like, oh, this girl's like really similar to me. Why didn't I just copy all her shit? Well, it's all zeitgeisty too, (laughs) right? Like I find the interesting thing is like, you can be in separate parts of the world, not be Uh connected. But if you have your own similar experiences, all you're doing is connecting dots. Literally. And I I guess that like some people are going to connect the same dots. Yeah. And Um, and especially women. Like, and so do you aspire to that, what you're describing? Or I really want to like, I would like to follow maybe closely to, to like rebel Wilson's, 
mm-hmm. career path. Like she is such, I worked with her on an Audible ad and she is such a dynamo. Um, she was like, we, we were doing this thing where I was like running. It was really funny going to treadmill. I was like, this is ironic because the only way you get me on a treadmill is if you pay me. And she was there and she was talking to me doing the Audible thing. And in between takes, she would like, lose all of her energy and just go back down to one, which I really respected. I was like, she's trying to save her energy. She's mm-hmm. so smart. In mm-hmm. the middle of doing the ad, she was also doing like Studio 10, the Today Show, like interviews. And then she'd come back, like she was a fucking dynamite, but she also was like half directing. She was like, mm-hmm. you know, when you come down here, do this, when you do this. And I was like, that's so cool. And I know she writes a lot of her own dialogue um, in, in scripts. Mm-hmm. And she's someone who's like famously herself, even though she's an actor, she's definitely a, you know, like Amy Schumer, she plays herself. Mm-hmm. And I would love to have that platform. I'd love to do film and television and mm-hmm. long form and not necessarily be my own director and da 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 da. I only did that out of necessity slash boredom. Mm. And so know? what does the energy to one look like? Would she retreat somewhere on her own? No, or? no, no, no. Just like, just personally, she would just not be as performative. Like she'd just come down and just talk normal. And then when she's on, she's mm. rebel. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you think you <laughs> struggle? Do you struggle to get down to the one? Do you feel? Yeah, I'm never at one. Yeah. And if I am, I'm like in solace (laughs) because I don't want people to see me at one because I'm boring and awful. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there's something enjoyable about like having a team that's okay with you being at one. Like, I guess she has to. It's out of necessity. She was doing a 15 hour shoot day. If she doesn't come down. But you're doing big fucking days. You're being in front of a lot of people. I remember like. Yeah, but she's in the middle of a court case. I don't know. She's like on a different level. Like, she was literally in the middle of a court case whilst filming this commercial. I was like, you're fucking Mm. amazing. And she could compartmentalize really Mm. well. But it's all relative. Mm. Like I think about all, like all the stuff just that we see externally that that you're doing from you know the live shows and the content and radio and the loop. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, all fingers of, pies me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, do you think that's a bit of a, a story that that you're that she's somehow different to you in that way? Well, she's just made opportunities for herself by being herself. So I see. I'm like, oh, well, if she can do it, maybe I can do it. Well, I like to look at these scenarios and say, if you were plonked in to Rebel Wilson's position right now, or if I was, or any of us, we probably couldn't survive because it's taken her years to build up. Resilience. That, that, you know, she's, she's pushing the ceiling of her own capacity. She is. And so what your capacity is now is huge mm-hmm. compared to the Tanya yeah. th- four or five years ago. Yeah. Just from a, a mental capacity oh, yeah. of being able to handle this stuff and I so i can handle so much more now because of therapy <laughs> <laughs> As How often you go, is, it a, is it a weekly thing <laughs> he's so interesting no, I, like I don't I, know, it just depends like at the moment it's like fortnightly i don't know why uh-huh. she's just like what's wrong with you um <laughs> nah, it's, I, I don't know yeah it's different for different reasons and so is the good the reason why it's successful is it more about outside like using mechanisms outside of those sessions like do they say okay well when you're feeling this way do x yeah. y and z yeah okay. so what he's trying to say is can you give him some tips so he yeah doesn't if have you to could put it in a freebies. podcast <laughs> yes. I, mean, that's a, I mean this is this is part of my problem like i love so help book, like help book, like uh, self-help and stuff right so do you read a lot of self-help yeah so i've got like 150 audio audio oh audible God, what books. are you reading do you like the alchemist uh nah it's like uh eat the frog uh or um uh, yeah, just all, all that sort of stuff. Are they stuff. more like existentialist sort of? Nah, like some of it's like super practical, okay. like productivity sort of you stuff. You know, like all the paperwork that you've done downloading those books, uh-huh. you could have seen it and could have been really personalized to you and you could have been talking yeah. to someone mm-hmm. really intimately. And <laughs> I know, I know. And, and, but part I feel of like it... this podcast is just me yelling at <laughs> you. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Um, well, no, I said to him, I would go to couples counselling. Yeah. yeah. And we actually, as a team... As uh-huh. a duo, yeah. we just, you know, get to sort of air and get through some things. Oh, uh-huh. really? Well, not that there's things Who's going on. Who's the problematic on. one? <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the point the rebellious 19-year-old in the corner. Yeah. Look yeah. at him. On his backwards. phone. No, he's, ta- he's taking notes. He does show notes, so he's oh, not being rude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can I tell you, once I was working on a, a TV show, oh, I was like, it was called uh, Bachelor Unpacked, and it was mm-hmm. like us unpacking The Bachelor, mm. and the camera guy... He was not guy, trapped in a box with our work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, were we? And um, the cameraman fell asleep and was snoring so loud, we had to like wake him up because he was fucking the sound 
<laughs> and then the other day I was doing the loop and I thought I was killing it and I was like killing it went over to the soundy and he was laughing and I was like yes I'm like doing a really good job today yeah. and I looked down and he was watching Netflix oh <laughs> no <laughs> I was big mouth. <laughs> well, it's a funny thing because people have thought that Mr. 97 is on his phone, but he is taking notes. And mm. so we're in this blurred space of someone could be watching one of your videos or doing some, you know, accounting work. Yeah, it is weird, isn't it, when you see someone on a phone? And it's hard when you're, like, uh, at work. Like, I went to Pixar this year and I was, like, working, but I was on my phone and you feel like people are, mm. like, thinking that you're just texting or whatever. I'm like, no, I'm editing. Mm -hmm. I was like, actually editing a video to send back to Pixar in Australia to get approved while I was mm. there, da 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 So, yeah, like, I shouldn't do that to you. Headphones <laughs> in a workplace, okay. Like, Depends what kind of workplace. Well, what about if you're a desk job? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because you're like, leave me alone, I'm trying to work. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, ban they're banning them at some places. Really? Yeah. No, it keeps you focused, don't you think? Oh, I think people well, are listening to podcasts. There's people right now listening to us. Oh. And if you are mid-work right now, do an Insta story. Yeah, and screenshot. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, happening all the time. Like, people will have a tab open. Are you a multitasker? Yes, I have 100 tabs open at 100 times yeah. a day. Mm, I think the, um, what's your desktop look like? How many things are on your desktop? Well. <laughs> Metaphorically and uh, physically. I think it's a real insight into people's minds. Jules Lund, yeah. full. Tabs, full. Yeah. How's he doing? I have not spoken. I saw Jules the other day, but he was, like, busy. And I was like, hey. And he was like, ah. Well, I think what he said from being on this show is he's on a train and it's gone through the tunnel yep. and he has to just keep looking forward yeah. and it has to and it's going faster and faster and so he's built a world for himself it's at this amazing. point it's pretty amazing and so advanced you know I was the first person to use Tribe you were mm -hmm. oh, wow. that's cool yeah it was for a One Direction CD. CD, like this is how, like, how long ago it was. And I got a $1 American note and I shouldn't have done this because it's illegal but I wrote um, where it said dollar I changed the word to direction and that was my poster sync. It's still on my Insta feed. Is it, and I got 20 bucks. Is it illegal <laughs> in Australia? To deface a to, No, to deface currency. an American yeah. currency. Because maybe there's a loophole there. Maybe in Australia we can write mm. on an American ha, note. We can burn <laughs> US dollars without getting in trouble. <laughs> you need the dollars. <laughs> we don't have the dollars. We're so poor, why would we do that? <laughs> yeah, so I think he... Um, it's interesting seeing... When I was in Bondi at that same time, he'd just sort of launched. We'd made the... the uh, the pitch video for the platform so it wasn't even That's created you yet pictures. you did all that I bizarre remember that. i don't think he knew what he was in for yeah no but i don't think you knew what you were in for because how do you know that it's going yeah, to be like it was he's he thinks really he's very advanced in his thinking don't you think he's i mean to I'm give the like advice that which he gave to you and what he gave to me which was pick up a camera you need to create not not just be a presenter mm. you need to do more than that you need to have more in your toolkit because yeah. shit's changing which was interesting from there's a simplicity TV to it as well isn't there mm. it's like just doing is so much of, of yeah. the equation well how do you know if you don't do mm. it's starting to learn so once and you, you find your voice the more you do it as well what does that mean to you finding your voice um well, I tried to do stand-up when I was 22, 21, 23, and I just couldn't find it. I couldn't figure out what I was trying to say and who I was. Mm. But the more I did content, the more I, like, refined and defined who I was just by trial and error. And now I do it and I know who I am and I know what I want to say and I know what my voice is and I know what I stand for and what I don't stand for. And knowing what you don't stand for is just as important as what you do stand for. Like, I will never do an ad for Coke. I don't drink Coke. Mm. Cocaine, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wonder if the business person behind that, Pablo, he's, yeah, he's on you'd tribe. Have go, you'd have to go direct. <laughs> um, uh, Tommy, go direct. Tommy and I have spoken a lot about our perfect day, what our perfect day would be. Uh, if you were to describe your perfect day in detail, uh, how would you describe it? You know, what time are you waking up? What are you doing? Where are you in the world? Oh, God. What are you creating? What are you, yeah. Well, I like Fiji because I like the water. Mm. I like water and nature because, like, it's good for anxiety. Mm -hmm. It's like the counter. Like, I like, before I ever do any sort of stand-up, I take my shoes off and, like, walk in the earth. It sounds so hippy-dippy, but it's just something that, like, grounds me and, like, helps me. So mm. I've this year I've chased nature like nothing else. It's mm. super weird because it's not in my nature to chase nature, but it helps me, so I've been chasing it. How did you discover that? 
Psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but <laughs> which psychologist are you going outside for? Have you tried equestrian uh, psychology or anything Horse like therapy, that? Horse therapy, like equestrian therapy. Oh, yeah, therapy. That's, that's generally for like people with uh, tra- really intense trauma. Uh-huh. Um, I know that they did or that they for like J.C. Horses. Lee Dugard. She was mm. kidnapped and, and raped. Like uh-huh. That's more for... But horse that therapy intense. is that kind of... That sounds like information known from reading crime and watching crime things that you like. I love crime. <laughs> and I, so w- what's I would the na- love to be a lawyer. So the nature thing, so do you actually like to have to be grass? Whatever. I love the water. Water and like real, like not, not pools, but the ocean. It's like cleansing. And like if you can have your head to the sky and your mm-hmm. feet in the ground, that's mm-hmm. when you're the most connected to the universe and you can connect. <laughs> I know I sound so hippie. Yeah, but it's when right, you Oprah. can. <laughs> it's my calling. <laughs> I am Oprah, but cheap. Uh, <laughs> but, and certainly not Oprah. She's like God, but I shouldn't say that. But. <laughs> it's like you can connect through both sides and then you're really connected mm. to your, your soul and your heart and your stuff and then you can create from a more real place instead yeah. of like being affected by the day and mm. your mind and your thoughts. It's just like the connection to the earth is like the best, I don't know, the, the, the realest place to start mm. from because then life builds up on you and then you go into the water and you can kind of symbolically mm. wash it away. I don't know. I like that idea and it works for me. Uh-huh. And so um, if you're in the, if you're in like the CBD of Melbourne and you've got a show on. Barefoot down Flinders Street. Yeah. What are you like? Yeah, what I'll is take it? my shoes off and walk around. Yeah. It, yeah. Do you find like, what is there I a try and good find hack? Do you go like a park or whatever and say, okay, there's some. No, I just do it before I go on. I can't do it. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So you almost need has- like a, um, even just a, oh, this could be a good business idea. Um, a um, the Earth mat. Oh, that's good. And then it could be like you can pick surfaces ro- like a rocky surface, or even oh, like a, like yes. a tub of water. It could literally be like a kitty litter, but instead of putting kitty litter, you just put so water smart. in it. That's so smart. However, I think it like defeats the entire purpose of it <laughs> <laughs> by monetizing it. I right, right, get right, stressed right. about the business model yeah. and are we selling enough yeah, units? Passive income. <laughs> yes. We'll get to yeah. passive income in a sec. So, um, so, yeah, yeah, so the day, so you're in Fiji. It was somewhere with water that's mm-hmm. real water and somewhere that um, the air conditioning is quick uh, to access oh, and there's a breakfast buffet, obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, what sort of breakfast? Is like continental? Mate, no. No, no, sorry. You want everything. Yeah, yeah. Cooked. Uh, Omelette station. Cooked continental. Oh, yeah. You, muffins. You need uh-huh. to be at a breakfast buffet that also has, like, for no reason, chocolate chip cookies. Like, oh, that's defi- the best. Oh, yeah, right. absolutely. You know what I mean? Well, there's <laughs> like some, chocolate that's why I love some of the real shitty hotels in the US. I find that the shittier the hotel, the more likely they'll have free cookies, where the higher <laughs> end hotels... Oh, you're not getting a free cookie. You don't get a free cookie. I remember I was like a, pla- a gold member of Hilton, Ooh. and they gave you a little like welcome bag. It had two fucking bottles of water. Wow. I was so upset. Like, this is what I've been chasing. It was a nightmare. So anyway, uh, at this hotel, yeah. the minibars included. So. Yes, I know. I've stayed here before and I was here uh-huh. for like three hours. I fell asleep and then had to get up and continue. I was on a book tour. Yeah. And I remember the loot t- taking everything. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Open the fridge, just poured it's it in the, my bag. It's there to take. It is. And you can't, the loot bag, they'll refill as well. Oh, really? Yeah, with Tim Tams and stuff. Anyway. Oh, so, God, why didn't I know that? I know. It's great. Uh, so, uh, so full breakfast. Yeah. Options. Um, I like to read, so I have a read of some book. Non-fiction or fiction? Well, I love true crime, so I love uh-huh. anything real. Uh, I just finished reading *The Stranger Beside Me*, which is Ted Bundy's case, written by Anne Rule, who was a true crime writer. Did he die recently? Recently? Oh, no, he was executed in the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy? I'm thinking, Ivan Milat. Did he just die? He's yeah. not executed yet. Is he dead? Why well, he's not being executed? I'm so obsessed. Sick. Ivan Milat is a fucking crazy man. Obviously, yeah. he like didn't fully kill people. He like severed their neck and like just oh, kept no. a little bit of them alive, just so that like just so they could like live in pain. Like he's a and you know he because he's from Newcastle he's our hometown <laughs> killer um, he's I think it was his nephew his name was like Malcolm Malat I can't completely uh-huh. it was Matt Malat something like that mm. he went into he took one of his friends into the place where his uncle Ivan did all his killings and killed his friend with the uh, hacksaw or whatever oh no seriously like how gross is that and now he's in jail as well it's like is yeah. that story get much attention? I feel like I haven't heard. I that. know it's, I just love true crime, so I will like spend mm. yeah spend so a lot of time. Sucks if your last name is Malat at this point, doesn't it? Yeah. My aunt used to teach him French in jail and oh, said wow. he was so lovely, and obviously you know that's the yeah yeah the, the charm of the psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, and like that, I think the, the thing that interests me about crime and true crime is that 
um, like sociopaths and psychopaths, it's all like, I just am so interested in the human experience. Mm. Like what makes someone want mm. to do that to somebody and, mm. and how can they live with themselves after and they don't care. That's the thing. Mm. It's like, how can you have zero empathy? And I guess I have so much empathy that I just can't fathom it. So I'm so interested into these stories. And mm. one of my favorite things to Google is people's, um, what's it called when they confess, they confess and, stand, and the or... way they confess is really interesting. Like the BTK, the way he confessed was like, well, I did this and then I did this and then I did this. And he's like, oh wait, the judge says, oh, did you um, kill him at that point? He goes, no, sir, I waited till later. And I, like, he's very, yeah, like, yeah. Sim- like, matter of fact, matter of fact and laying it's like, it down as one, as two, three. It's not fucked. Oh, did like, you, did, it's unbelievable. Uh, did and you, yeah, I'm just interested. Did you Why? listen to who the hell is Hamish? That podcast? No, it's great is about it? the con artist, but it's, interesting you know by the time he then gets caught and how he like he obviously confesses because he wants to get a lesser penalty or punishment Mm. but cold absolute ruthless just absolute scumbag yeah have you watched the doco on the collar bomb the the pizza (laughs) delivery guy what's that one called Uh, i don't know it's got a interesting name but it was like they showed the footage that oh, was yeah, so yeah, yeah. rattling they the yeah. fo- I was really rattling and oh that's the thing this God. is a normal reaction they yeah. don't react like that people who do these things they don't react like that and then they lie to the cops and it's like how how I just genuinely yeah. don't understand like I really want to inter- interview a sociopath or a psychopath who's honest and knows about it and is self aware because you can't interview them Mm. Like, Isn't the yeah. joke that like people, big YouTubers and you know big personalities have these traits as well? well they say one in twenty-five are sociopaths. Mm-hmm. But there is functioning sociopaths and psychopaths that don't act out and kill people. Yeah, yeah. of they course. They just have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so perfect day. So yeah, you're reading yeah. some crime. Yes. Nonfiction. It's probably eleven a.m. What time did you actually wake up? Do you think? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Whenever I feel like it. Yeah, okay. No alarm. <laughs> Miss the buffet farm. Yeah. <laughs> no! The buffet is always yeah, on. It's your perfect day. You can have yeah, yeah, it's always 24 on buffet. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't know. Are you yet. living in a hotel? <laughs> oh, God. I, I do live in a hotel. Yeah. I travel so much. It drives me nuts. Um, I don't know. I go for a swim and hang out with my boyfriend, who is, like, the world's biggest legend. And then, I don't know. Maybe I do some writing in the afternoon if I felt like it. Only if I felt like it. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I'd like to do something like challenges me, not like skydiving, but something like that Sky- makes yeah. you feel adrenaline. Uh-huh. Scuba what, diving? You're yeah, something Fiji- that I haven't done before. Like maybe jet like ski? yeah, jet ski. Although can I tell you this? I went to Fiji recently, and I said, "Oh, can I go on a the thingy?" And she said, "No, you've got to be under a hundred kilos." I was like, "How dare you? <laughs> be so accurate." <laughs> <laughs> Is that really the case? Yes! It's like Hamish uh, Blake with the Tramp Legal. Do you remember that back in the day? He wanted to get under 100 so he could go on a trampoline. Yeah, it's literally that. Yeah. Wonder why that is. It just made me laugh. I was like... Well, that goes that plan. <laughs> so we're not there. We're, we're we're not with that woman in the picture. Yeah, yeah. So the perfect you, you, day. You, you so we're like manta ray diving, or That'd you know cool. something where you can like not. I don't want to hurt them or anything, but just uh-huh. like mm. see. I don't know. Nature's great. Could be scared of a shark, which is bringing you some adrenaline. But there's uh-huh. no shark because you. But, they, but you still the got fear the of a potential fear of the shark. Like... So then it's you know extreme diving. <laughs> so nature. <laughs> I gotta feel something. Yeah, yeah. I mean nature. So numb. Let me feel. <laughs> Uh, Nature's a big part already, it seems. Yeah, like I love it, nature. Uh-huh. It's like a new thing. I always used to be like, oh, animals, no. But now I'm like, oh, animals, therapy, bring them on. Yeah, mm. it's almost like uh, there's a big movement into the retreat type space of like... But so many people are like this and it's because like, mm. I believe the world is really hard. There's no distance between work and not work. Mm. Everyone's a workaholic. Everyone wants to get ahead. The internet's always on. The TV's always on. The phone's always on. Multiple technologies, multiple times. Emails are always on. Your boss can always call you. There's this constant anxiety and it's like, what can we connect to that's real? And it's the one thing that's just born here and Mm. it's nature. And you can connect to that. Hopefully it can like just remove some of that stress and anxiety and help you breathe literally because trees create oxygen. You know what I mean? And there's this huge Mm. movement at the moment where people are putting um, trees and outdoor like things, I guess, like. Uh, yeah, trees and plants and whatever into their workspaces because it actually increases people's ability yeah. to work and motivates them because it's oxygen and it's real and it's life and it's like we're becoming so consumed with something fake. Mm-hmm. What's the best way to get back to real? And that is with real stuff. But is it fucked up that they're setting their, them up in offices? Like I'm always a little bit uh, sceptical of 
places where it's like, we're going to give you lunch for free. Mm -hmm. We're going to put the plants in so you don't have to fucking yeah. leave now. You know what? Daycare service. Yeah. For your kids. Yeah. Like, it seems like all of those <laughs> things. How about, like, we work in places that are a little bit shitty, but you get we actually, leave. like, leave <laughs> yeah, yeah. and explore. Is there a sense of uh, being in nature also makes you realise how fucking irrelevant we are to the yes. universe, right? It's like, oh, my God, there's something outside of this thing up here. Yes. Yes. And what I think and all my bullshit, because the trees don't give a fuck. Well, I think that's why the horses are so good. Because, yeah. like, if you can, like, move a horse around or whatever, it's like, fuck, look how he's, big he's it is. He's set on horse and, therapy. Well, uh, <laughs> we can just get you there. <laughs> Jeff Jowett, a mate well, of ours, he gets right into all he, the He was someone who was a you know, very wealthy man, lost it all. Oh, no. Was very um, living incongruently and drugs and alcohol yeah. and has found horses which you know from the outside looks like a, an unusual thing he's in love with them they've yeah. helped him so much oh, well, and therapy. he's not a psychopath mm. i don't think but it, they've been a therapy yeah. for, for him which Animals is are massively yeah. yeah have you got an animal no nah, because i live in a really tiny unit i don't want to put an animal through that so mm. there's a hard bit too sad. right it's like the Just existence we you. have <laughs> is <laughs> i keep them there for my own entertainment it's like sad as fuck in places you will bring me joy <laughs> yeah. 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 well you think about it. i i grew up in a in a home uh, in a <laughs> that house. sounds really bad i grew up in a house with a yeah. backyard and i got to have fires and yes. i got to play with you know and build a fucking flying fox i'm That's just talking cool. about privilege right now yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking about my son. We've just moved to a, a bigger place. There is something about having that stuff. Yeah, that suburb life. That's moving away if we choose to live in a place like Sydney where you, it's most apartments around here unless you're oh, yeah. Kerry Packer. Yeah, uh, a million I mean, dollar apartments. Like. <laughs> exactly. And so how do you then... I mean, this is, the com, this is combating that. Yeah. You know, reality, living in an apartment, but also seeking out nature and yeah. Well, things around us. I wanted to us. live in um, Newcastle for a little bit. No, I went home after Canberra for a year, just under a year to go to finish my book and like to just be at home with my family because I'd been in radio for like nine years, eight years traveling around. I was like, oh, it'd be cool to go home. Um, but I couldn't because the industry wasn't there and it's mm. two hours commute. Mm. And then so you're in the car more and then you're listening to yeah. more podcasts. And then I was like, oh my God, everyone's going to kill me. Um, <laughs> Because when you listen to a lot of true crime, you start to think everyone's a serial killer. Yeah. Well, it definitely is framing something in your mind. Like it is like that type of content all the time. I can't do it because oh, no, I feel I, like... I don't, it, I don't mm. consume it consistently. It's just, you know, the uh, storytelling. It's, uh -huh. uh, if people can tell a great story... Mm. And, uh, and uh, you know, sadly, they never end well. But, you know, survivor stories are incredible. Mm. Like any story of resilience is incredible. Yeah. People who can come out of really shit situations and turn them around. Mm. Like that inspires the fuck out yeah. of me. I mean, I watch Suits and I think I'm a lawyer. You know, Girl, I watched Nashville and I was like, I'm a country music singer. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like um, air crash investigations. Oh, is so yeah, aviation expert. Yeah, right? aviation. <laughs> Everyone, like, oh, the A380. Jeez, I th think I heard that click, which is uh, not good, <laughs> which, which is wrong. I don't, no, it's I don't true, know what though. the fuck I'm talking you about. You watch any TV show and you're like, this is me now. Like, I watch Scrubs and I was like, fuck, I'm a good nurse. Like, also, because I always imagine like Scrubs would be like, but it's not like that at all. Yeah. Like, they're not doing dick dumb stuff and like yeah you know. what's been the video because you have delved into things like you know a nurse and uh, the fitness thing the comparisons and what have you learned about one of those that's been really surprising oh well you know the thing that i've learned most throughout my videos is that um how like i was in dubai recently and this woman who was like from pakistan was like i love your videos like i love wow. the hairdressing one and i was like oh wow they're, they're so unanimous and yeah. I, I thought maybe i was when i first started making videos i was like i'm a quirky girl i'm so different and then i was like oh i'm relatable damn it <laughs> <laughs> i thought i was different but uh like that was really interesting and I, i've been in the states and people like uh, i remember i was at the front of the sofitel and this woman drove up and I was on FaceTime to my boyfriend and this chick was like drunk as a skunk. Oh, Tanya, <laughs> I watch your videos and you're real funny. I'm a nurse, so like, I get it. And I was like, oh my God, like, I thought that was an Australian thing. Yeah. or Because I think the thing I've learned is the more you lean into a niche, which is what Jules told me to do, uh, that's when people really deeply connect. They're like, that's exactly what mm, it's like to mm. be a waitress. That's exactly like, they're those, those nuances are what make people really click share. What's the niche for you? Because you almost delve into different Multiple. niches. Multiple niches. So what is it for you? 
Well, I think being like an empath and understanding people and and I never want to make videos to like make fun of people. I do it in solidarity with mm. them. So I think that coming from that mm. place helps. But it's also like listening to people's stories. When I meet a nurse, I'm like, oh, great. You know, tell me something or I don't know. I'm always wanting to get their information and, f- and it sounds dumb, hear their perspective heart I know that sounds weird so I can convey that in a video so they can go that's me that's my story like it's cool to tell someone's story back to them um but I also like make sure they're all like all my scripts are like read by a nurse read you know like I make sure they're quite detailed and then I figure out I go I'll call a friend and go hey if I said this would this be a nursey thing and they're like yes and then this is another thing we think and then I'll just delve delve deeper into it and hope it's right as well because I've heard a nurse spoken to a nurse I don't know like it's a lot of my stuff is so intuitive, mm. which is kind of scary because it means I can't replicate it and and whatever. But it also means that I'm being led by intuition and not by anything else, which is kind of cool because... Well, it's just being you. Mm. Yes. And, and people want this grand scheme. And like I did this interview for like the government on Monday and they were like, oh, talking about content. And I was like, I don't know. Like I just do mm. me and hope it works. And that's literally it. And I don't mm-hmm. have a grand plan. I never had a grand plan going into it. I'm just like a really, really lucky person who has managed to find what they love and and does it every day and I'm really fucking thankful because I've had a lot of no's in my life and, and you've worked really fucking hard mm. as well I've worked really hard yeah mm. but I've also had a lot of great people around me helping me to get where I am and I'm just like lucky like I'm really happy and lucky because not a lot of people get to do what they love every day and I do collaborating uh, you've just done some huge shows with Christian Hull I love him how, how do you approach that as a someone who loves to create their own, write their own? But so does he. Yeah, yeah. And so then you got two. two. Yes, but we also like love each other so much and he helped me make videos. Like he helped me edit and learn to edit. And so we both have such a mutual respect for each other and always have, like we've always been sharing each other's videos since the beginning. Um, and if you guys come and see, these, see the show, you'll see why uh, it's not a dual show. It is, but it isn't. Because we've lived in separate states, so it's really hard to put together a dual show. So mm. first half is me, second half is him, but we do some stuff as well together. Mm. But that's a surprise. <laughs> in saying that, our shows are sold out. So, <laughs> so <laughs> good <suck> luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'd love, I hope it gets filmed for something. It'd be cool if they could put it on like a one night stand. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Christian is such a good stand up. He's way better than me. Oh, yeah. well, I saw a behind the scenes that he took uh, of you performing and you just had the audience in hysterics what's the feeling like when you're on stage and people are bringing you that sort of energy <laughs> well the imposter syndrome comes up <laughs> why mm. why why do you i don't know what i'm doing like is that in bah. the moment though i feel yes. like in the moment <laughs> wow. is it can you not because well, uh, you have more than one thought at one time like yeah. often it's like okay now i got to keep them laughing uh, <laughs> shit yeah yeah like it's it's over i over intellectualize everything i'm like mm. why are they here i'm going to fuck this up soon no one likes me this is ah, they're just waiting for christian um but yeah in the moment all of that comes and mm. like when you have a sip of water on stage it feels like fucking 5 years because yeah. it's silent and you're like ah feel the space because I'm a radio announcer I'm like fill the space fill the space fill the space so you snort while you're drinking <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was on stage the day and drank Red Bull so quick I burped all the way through my set and I was like I'm so sorry you just need one of those backpacks like a camel back type of thing yeah. like, just slurping that'd I be great I just farted <laughs> I've been farting all, all show yeah. is, there, is there a elegant sense? no but I enjoy it like yeah. I, I love I love it I love pe- meeting people at the end as well and and but it, yeah, I feel so like undeserving, and I'm like, Ugh. that's why I see mm. a therapist. You see, I mean, <laughs> but um, we've got a lot of people who listen who are in all different parts of Australia and regional markets. They they have radio shows. They would be seeing your story and connecting to so many bits and pieces. Mm. I'm guessing you probably have them reaching out to you yeah a lot. Yeah, but a lot of them are like, I know you're really busy. And I'm like, I am, and I wish I could give you more. Yeah. And so I'm- what's the... So is it, if this is an opportunity to write, write back to them virtually through a podcast with some of those bits of wisdom or the things that you think that would really help them? For people in regional radio? Yeah. Keep going. Stand out. Make original content. Scare yourself. Challenge yourself. Uh, have a healthy fear of mediocrity, which I do <laughs> mm, um and annoy your bosses yeah and ask for feedback constantly 
and don't be afraid to PR yourself and be a PR hawk. People go, oh, mm. you know, I don't want people to think, you know, I'm up myself. Well, it's either that or you stay in cans for 15 years. How can you be a PR hawk? Do you just, like, send emails to Radio Today? And <laughs> well, <what's> I wouldn't, <laughs> but um, <laughs> not my favourite website. Um, I don't know. I think it's more like sending air checks to people that you care about their opinion. Uh-huh. So you- it's not necessarily about getting things written about you. It's more like... PRing yourself. Well, what you're like describing is getting really feedback. really good content that yeah. gets a reaction. Yeah. Like when I was in Toowoomba, one of the best things I did was, well, with my co-announcer, he, he was like, do we have to do this? And I was like, fucking yes. <laughs> um, was doing a, because we were, uh, what's it called? Not near the ocean, landlocked. We did the Iron Man challenge when the Iron Man was going on the Gold Coast and it was men ironing. <laughs> and we literally had a workwear sponsor and they had to iron like a fitted shirt, uh, you know, like pants, cargo pants with all the pockets. And then we had like a laundry person um, monitor it and give the, the winner their prize. And it was just like so ridiculous that it like made the, the news in the Gold Coast and Brisbane and just because it was like so different, but it was also really topical. So it's like, how do you make really outstanding content that that you can use as PR, mm. but also like that makes you feel fulfilled. That makes like, I had to pay, pay for the irons. Mm. I didn't give a shit. I was like, I want to make good stuff. And mm. if they can't afford it, it's not going to make my heart like, I need to be fulfilled by creating. Mm. And so if, if, if someone says, oh, we can't have the budget, I'm like, great, I'll do it myself. What about uh, the difference between speaking locally and to the community versus trying to serve a bigger audience when you're in a regional But market? you are serving that audience because they're landlocked. They understand what it's yeah. like. Not Like you have to... Was that the first thought, I also though? did a thing called... Was it the first thing? No, I thought the name sounded really funny. Um, <laughs> I did this thing where I pashed my co-announcer for charity um, in Griffith. We called it Pash for Cash. Five, if we got $5,000, we would yeah. pash each other uh-huh. for... I mean, that's such a HR nightmare now. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking <laughs> And that. he did not want to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> like, he literally <laughs> cried. Like, he was so sad. And then, like, oh, should he I cried. tell the whole story? Like, yeah. he didn't want to yeah. do it. And so we just kissed, like, lightly, like, on the cheek. Because I was, like, in. I was like, let's film it. We'll go full tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the rejection of my co-announcer being like, mm not even for charity. <laughs> so we did kind of... Yeah. Anyway, we did... Sort of kiss. So you kissed on the cheek for fun. Well, it was a. I was going further. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I said this is like a me too sort of story. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was um, ridiculous. But like that was for the community. That was for the local uh, cancer charity, and yeah. you know that's that's a way to take something local and turn it global. But yeah, of course, like the one thing that radio has that no one else has is the the local the localness. Is that a word? Yeah. And the uh, timeliness, like you're live. Get that news on the air. Get that person on the air. Get, you know what I mean? And immediately. Yeah. I love the Pash for Cash. I feel like 97. Pash for Cash. <laughs> I mean, we've they're made good. him uh, bleach his hair. The shameless girls set him up with a few dates. Mm. Oh, they're great. I really like those girls. They're yeah. cool. Yeah. Superstars. And so, um, yeah, we. I think there could be a Pash for Cash in the 10 <laughs> years that we're, we're doing it. It's for, what it's about for that? charity, Mr. 97. Yeah, yeah, would you Wait, kiss? Wait, let me see your hair. Like, take off your hat. Yeah, we go. It's... it's uh, <laughs> you look like Justin Timberlake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. He's hot. Yeah, he is hot. Yeah. And he can dance. Yes. Oh, as in, he can't, but yeah. Um, yeah, no JT chance. can no dance. Chance. With some commitment, you could dance. <laughs> yeah. He's like, please stop talking about me. <laughs> what, <laughs> Leave me alone. What, what are you not good at? Almost everything. I'm not, I can't read an analogue clock, which is really embarrassing. Just what because is it I that never know what time it is. <laughs> like, like, I never know. Is it the small hand that fucks with you? I just can't figure the... it out. Mm. Uh-huh. I'm quite dyslexic. Well, Tommy was saying the other day, six o'clock, uh, back, six back. What was he saying? Six o'clock back? Like, trying to get oh, me to turn around? Right. Check your six. Check you your six. Do you know what six. that means? Go halfway around. Yeah, yes, it's like behind you. If, if yeah, Check your six means check look, your turn six. around. But it's, it's, but yeah. it's an analogue clock reference, which yeah, we yeah, fuck yeah. with I you. I like it. That's Check your six. Check your six now. It's just watch your back. Josh, check, check your six, please. Oh, Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna, that's a good one. Check your six. Uh, Tanya, thank you for coming uh, to our hotel in Sydney. Oh, I feel like I had so many things I'm bad at. Oh, you, what have you got? Name one other. Oh, I'm really disorganised and I don't often wear a supportive bra and I never get my hair dyed when I'm meant to. I eat too much food. I'm very unfocused. I can't remember what I'm meant to be doing this all the time. This is a lot like me, isn't it? I, it has to finish. What's your superpower? Uh, I can connect with people uh, like no one else. Love it. 
Awesome. Tanya, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Go see a therapist. Okay, um, maybe. maybe we'll no, do, we, absolutely. If, I'm not fucking do, leaving without we, some resolve from do, this. If we do it for content. No oh, way. Okay. That's what it can't be. It okay. cannot be for content. Uh, well, we it has only to do be shit for, for you. content. I'm well, sorry. That's, no, that is deflection <laughs> at its worst. And when you go to see a therapist, they'll say, why do you keep deflecting? And you promise they won't yell at me like you I are. can't promise that. Uh, yeah, all right. So no, they, 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 won't, they won't yell at you. Either that or go to a fucking horse farm. Just sort your shit out. <laughs> I'll go to a horse farm. Thank you for coming in. As you walk out, you, you can take whatever you want. Yeah. Best out believe of, out of I will. It's a couple of bottles of, uh, it's bottles a, of wine. It's a daily talk show. If you've enjoyed the show, uh, review us on Apple Podcasts. And uh, I mean, you've sold out. You like you've. No, I think there's some tickets for the last Canberra show. Okay. And hope up. Perfect. Awesome. All right, it's a daily talk show. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you guys. See you tomorrow. I won't be there. Kidding. <laughs> I got nothing else on, but I just won't be here. <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs>